It's the National Football League on EA Sports, and we'll get to see a battle for conference superiority. It's the Cincinnati Bengals and the New York Giants, and it's all up next. From the stadium that hosted Super Bowl 48 back in 2014, there's a look at MetLife Stadium here in East Rutherford with Charles Davis. As always, I'm Brandon Gordon. Now, Charles, you and I, we've done a lot of games together. It always seems like we're rehashing the same storylines. Turnovers, of course, always a big story. Quarterback play, running backs, yada, yada, yada. But getting ready for this one, one word kept coming to mind, and that's preparation. Well, it's critical to be prepared physically, mentally, when you think about getting ready for an NFL game, you have to wonder, what will they throw at us that maybe we haven't seen before? Two-minute drill, maybe different things like that. Got to be prepared. You're exactly right. The Florida Atlantic man, Greg Joseph, ready to get this one started. And off we go from MetLife Stadium. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. And the kick team down there quickly. They don't have to run as far as they used to. And they're able to stop him before he can even make it to the 15. And the Bengals make their way out on offense for the first time, led by their fifth-year quarterback out of LSU, Joe Burrow. Burrow is coming off a year where he suffered his second season-ending injury over a four-year span. And while that's certainly concerning, there's certainly no denying he's truly one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL whenever he's on the field. However, for them to reach their full potential, he has to be out there because as long as he is, this team is a legitimate contender to win it all. And we've got a pause following the play because it appears a member of the Bengals in some discomfort. We'll get an update when we return to MetLife Stadium. Here's second and ten. Burrow will throw. Hits his target. That's Charlie Jones. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. Twelve yards that time at a Cincinnati first down. What an intelligent play as he found open grass and uncovered quickly. A nice clutch play to move the chains. The defense, they've got to do a much better job of accounting for these shorter routes. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. It's a loss of seven. And now it's third down. What an advantage having a lead guy to build a defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself as we just saw there. Oh, this will be incomplete. The rush gets home just as he was letting that go. That could have been worse. Instead, it's fourth down. That was their first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. The Giants' offense ready to go to work, and they'll do so behind Daniel Jones in his sixth season now out of Duke. And he's coming up an injury-shortened season where he played in six games, going one and five over that span with just three total touchdowns on the year. But the Giants have a lot of confidence in him. They didn't draft a quarterback this year, and they're looking for him to bounce back and prove that last year was an anomaly. Now Jones. Will get this into the hands of the wideout from LSU. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive. First down. His first pass attempt of the game, Charles, and the pass rush was right there to hit him. But no fear. He delivered an accurate ball. Nice catch. And you never want to see your quarterback getting hit. But it also sends a message to the rest of the team when he's able to take that shot and still deliver downfield. Showing a little toughness, and the team rallies around him. This could really help them on their drive. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. 
I know at times people think we use it too often, but you've got to be able to throw guys open. And when you read zone, you've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. Oh, and that'll be incomplete. Well, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up a third down. Absolutely nowhere to go with the football. And he's just going to put this one in the Hudson River. Maybe he's a little fortunate he didn't get called for grounding because that one was well over everyone's head. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Throwing Jones. And Jones will hit the deck here, and he is able to pick up the first down. A nice pickup of 17 yards. Certainly not a positive sign if you're the D coordinator and you see your guys give up that space so early in the game. Third down, that's when the clamps are supposed to come out, but his ability to create things with his legs makes things difficult. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 47. Devin Singletary with his first carry of the game. And somehow he's going to get a yard out of this as he fought through that first contact. It's second down. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there. But how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. Jones operating from the gun. Complete to his target, Jalen Hyatt. Man, he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. So the completion good for seven there. And that'll leave him with a third and two. They'll come to the line needing only two yards to gain the first here. They'll go to the air here on third and two. And this pass broken up. The contact well timed there. And now fourth down. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. Feeling like they're not quite in field goal range yet. They're going to go for it on fourth. Looking to throw. Jones. And it's going to be batted down. It will go the other way with the football. The Giants go on fourth, but come up empty. And the Bengals will get the football back. Even though they didn't get it, probably the right call. Too long for a field goal and just not a whole lot to gain from a punt there. Yeah, you wouldn't have really netted very much yardage if you pumped the ball, right? And the thing about a field goal, and you know this from so much experience, the longer the field goal, the lower it comes out off the kick, right? Which means it's got a better chance of being blocked. So you're taking a chance either way. I like the fact they went for it. Second down and four. Now it's Burrow. Man open, that's Jamar Chase complete. And Chase going to pick up a Bengals first down as he'll get this down to the 47-yard line. Moss on the give up the middle. Runs through the contact. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. That one good for 15, and the Bengals get a first down. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and put the defense back on its heels. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Burrow looking to pass. And that nearly trouble, but it's incomplete. The rookie had it and lost it. And it'll be second down. They'll go up the middle here with Moss. And he's going to take this one down to the 25. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. But this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and ten. Nice run on second and ten, where probably everyone was expecting them to throw the football. Now, if you're the defense, what are they going to do on third down? You're a little off balance. Here's third and three. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. 
And he takes a shot on the release, as this will be incomplete. Kind of a fine line when you're setting up the screen. You don't want to throw it too early and have the defense react too quickly. And you definitely don't want to throw it too late. And that way it's not formed perfectly. Got to make sure you hit it just right. McPherson's kick is good. And the Bengals are on the board first here. It's 3 nothing. So after drive number three here, we have a score. And it's three points after the field goal. I would say the feeling out process for both these teams, I'd say it's over, partner. Everyone understands what's going on now. You've kind of probed a little bit. Now you want to start throwing the big shots. First three points up on the board could be significant. So the Giants getting the football back here for their second drive. They're coming off a fourth down gamble that last drive that backfired CD, but really not as badly as it could. Their defense held up and only gave up three points. And what they want to do is play off the momentum the defense gave them, only giving up the three points in that situation after they failed on fourth down. Now they want to make it pay off. They want to pay homage to the defense and have their own drive pay off in points for themselves. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Now, that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. He winds up giving a yard back there, and now it's third and two. Well, that play never really got off the launching pad. He had a linebacker in his face before he had a chance to do much of anything. Yeah, I think it's big boys up front, that offensive line. They've got to do a little bit better job of protecting him if they're going to continue to run the option like this. And they'll run the option on third and short yardage. And this will be a Giants first down as the tackle made it about the 43-yard line. And this is one of those plays that if you can use it to keep the chains moving, it's a good play. And not only that, it tends to tamp down the pass rushers because they have to recognize this play and stay at home. The quarterback uses it well. Read option, keeps it, and picks up a first down with some nice running. They'll run on first down with Singletary. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. And this is going to be incomplete. That was not a real confident throw right there. And he's just two of seven to start the game. Now he's going to have to find a groove with a big third down coming up. Let's see if his confidence can increase. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he will get this to the midfield stripe, but that's not going to be enough. He's a few yards short. 3 nothing after one on EA Sports. Ready to roll for the second quarter from MetLife Stadium. The Giants with the football as they've got it with a fourth down coming up. On to punt, Jamie Gillen. Charlie Jones, deep for Cincinnati. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. So now the Bengal offensive unit back out onto the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice the game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? right. <laughs> not one that I've ever met. Now Burrow. Firing quickly, but it's incomplete. Tough series for the passing game. Things just aren't clicking. Hope it didn't come through on this play and get this series back on track with a completion for enough yardage for a first down. Right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Isaiah Simmons picking it off. And he will bring it back. It's 
It's a pick six and a Giants touchdown. An excellent play there, CD, on the pick six. And I, I think they, were they a nickel? Did they have an extra DB out there? Yeah, Brandon, I think they were in standard nickel, not the uh, Buffalo, as teams like to call it, meaning three safeties for big nickel. They just wanted to take away the quarterback's throwing lanes, and that's exactly what they did and came through with a big-time pick six. Joseph connects on the extra point, and that makes it a 7-3 lead. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. And that's pretty good coverage by the kick team as he'll only be able to get this past the 15-yard line and no further. Burrow and the Bengals with a first and 10 at the 34. They'll start on the ground with Moss. And he maneuvers up the middle for three, and it's second down. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. On second down, it's Moss again. And space tough to come by there as he'll get maybe a yard to the 37. Back-to-back -back runs, I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. Over the middle, that's caught by Chase. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Now it's Burrow. This will be caught by Brown. And they'll get this just to the 47. One-yard gain. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. The offense on third down tonight, they've only converted once in four tries. This is third and 11. Here's Burrow. He's got his target. That's complete. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Giants' 37. His first catch, and it's a pretty big one. They get the conversion on third down. Has a pretty good throw on the curl route there. Third down, and they pick up a first. Defense should be aware for that, right? It should be aware, but we're so hard sometimes. Yeah, it's not easy. Because <laughs> when, they, when they sell that route really well, you think they're going upfield, then they curl back, show their numbers to the quarterback, and complete the play. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Here's a second and five. On the handoff, it's Moss. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Back to throw. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. Normally on third down and short yardage, you're thinking to throw to your tight end. It's just going to be a simple chain mover. But this time, they let him roam down the field. And a nice dart picks up the first down and then some. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. On the give, this is Moss. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Just a yard on the pick up there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Sometimes you're aligned perfectly, and the play comes to you. And sometimes you got to cover some ground to go make the play, as we just saw there. We saw a great, great example of perseverance right there on that play. Got to be careful. They might want to throw one over his head as this game progresses. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. 
Kirk hands that time to knock that one away. It sure looked like a short touchdown, but able to get a good break on the football and force the incompletion. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. They're going to look to throw. Oh, and his early struggles continue. Here's another one intercepted. Picked up by the USC man, Adore Jackson. And he will bring it back. It's a pick six and a Giants touchdown. Joseph now to add the PAT. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. And he takes this near the 25. Just a little pass there. Call it the 26. The Bengals offense now. They head back onto the field. Now they've sort of lost their way, partner. How do they recalibrate and get this proverbial train back on track? Well, this is where leadership really comes into play. How's the head coach handling it? The offensive coordinator? Sometimes they just make a joke. <laughs> All right, guys, you had your fun? All right. Throw it out the window. Yeah, let's get back on track here. And sometimes that'll work just fine. I guess it's time now to lean on that leadership. They'll bring the tight end in motion right. After the pick six, here's Burrow again. And Jones has it over the middle. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. They'll set up a throw. Now a short one to Gesicki. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. Nice hands displayed there by the former Penn State standout. And he's certainly hoping to get back on track now that he's playing in a Bengals offense that better suits his skill set. A first and ten here, and you know, if they could just get three out of this, something about whittling it to a one-score game at half that might provide a psychological boost. Firing quickly, but it's incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. <laughs> He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. Throwing again, it's Burrow. Throw right side into the hands of the tight end sample. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Third and four. Out of the gun, it's Burrow. Able to find the open man. That's complete. Now he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Give him the third down conversion. Five yards on the play. Third and four. He did just enough. I mean, just enough to move the chains. And that's all you're looking for, right? Just want to keep the drive moving. You don't need the big play there. Just get to that marker that you described. And he was able to do just that. He'll find Jones again. Complete. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two.
They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Got a man open. It's Chase. They'll give him four yards there, and that'll bring up second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. This is a 26-yard attempt. McPherson's kick is good. And a second field goal here cuts their deficit to 14-6 to now. So no problems at all on that one. And, and you know there's virtually no win. This is a kicker's dream here tonight. It absolutely is, isn't it? So to me, with no wind, it should be a passer's dream as well, yeah. right? But in this case, the defense held out. They had to force the field goal. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. On the return, Tyrone Tracy. Escaping a tackler at the 25. So we've reached halftime here at MetLife Stadium with the Giants out in front. As we get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. treated to an entertaining first half. Both these teams with some high points and maybe a couple of low points as well. So it's going to be a question of who can be the most disciplined team going forward. Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. ready to get rolling. The Giants with a lead and they are set to receive this kick. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. The Giants offense set to begin this third quarter. Jones and the Giants now with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And he can't quite bring it in. Might have heard footsteps there across the middle. Second down. In the early days of the NFL, you could easily blame these drops on maybe some uneven or uncertain lighting in a stadium. Not anymore. The lights are pretty good. Yeah, they're great here at night, but his second drop indeed. Not a good look. Now Jones. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. And we constantly talk about people being on the same page. In this situation, the two of them saw the play with the same eyes. They understood where the open spaces were going to be, and they found a way to get there to pick up a new set of downs. Out of the gun now on third down. And he nearly got the first himself, but it appears he's going to be about a yard or two short. A solid run of 11 there as he tucked it and ran, but he's still short of the marker at its fourth. That was a good effort there, trying to do it on his own, but as a defender, you're in a tough spot because you have coverage responsibilities behind you, and if you take off too quick to try and get him down, 
he might loft it over your head. So better to track with your man defensively than try to go up and make a stop on the quarterback. Exactly right. What you're hoping is that your guys in the front seven can get him down. A call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. The Bengals offense and Joe Burrow getting set for this next drive. And it's been a rough night at the office for him. He's been more of a liability than an asset throughout the contest. And this offense is having a hard time overcoming his struggles to this point. The Bengals drive about to get going. And Charles, they're certainly still right in this game, but they need that offense to wake up and in a hurry. Yeah, I like the way you put it. They certainly did seem to sleepwalk a bit in the first half. Now that their defense has done its job, it's their turn now to go out and try and get some points. All that practice time came to fruition on that play. All those timing routes that they work on through training camp, OTAs, mini camp, and just regular season, they got it done on that one. An out cut. Ball was delivered and picked up the completion. Burrow throw. Able to find Higgins. And Higgins is going to have a Bengals first down as he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. Four yards on the pickup. Good enough to extend the drive. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. He's going to have the hook up here to chase. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. The catch and run pays off for 29 yards. And it's pretty evident that this passing game has been frustrated so far. They haven't really moved the ball the way we might have expected. But this is a good pickup here for the first down. So the drive takes him into Giants territory now. First and 10 at the 38. To the air again, Burrow. Open man is Higgins. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped have a guy who could turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. This second and four. Burrow looking to pass. This complete to Jones. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Giants' 12-yard line. 19 yards there on the catch and run. Now what we're seeing, this is much better from this offense because so far in this game, no touchdown to this point. And what's usually a direct correlation? Very few explosive plays. That's been their issue. Not able to make that big shot downfield or break one off. But a nice game there for a first down. This will be caught at about the six. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team, but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large body tight ends, and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want them to catch the football first. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. They give him two yards there as they're set up now with a first and goal. They come out with one back and three tight ends. Moss. Oh, he's going absolutely nowhere as he is hit behind the line. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. Well, I have to think that the wheels are really spinning in their play caller's mind now. That little setback there on first down. They'll have three more shots if that's what it takes because they've got to take field goals out of their thought process. They need a touchdown and a conversion to tie this game. What play calls does he have on that sheet? And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. 
It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. And now third and goal coming up, the loss on second down. That just means this crowd's going to get even louder, and they'll get a little bit of extra help from the defenders as they exhort them to join them in the effort. Third and goal, Burrow. That's to Chase. He's got it. Touchdown, Cincinnati. It's a six-yard touchdown pass, and the Bengals have come back to make it a two-point game. Well, they had their chances in the first half, you remember, but had to settle for two field goals. This time, they come away with six. I think they actually got affirmation about what they were doing by getting a touchdown because the field goals means they got in range but couldn't quite finish it off. This time, they broke through, and that's great for the old confidence. And on the sideline, difference of a feeling between three and six, is it astronomical or it, no? It, it, it can be at times, that's for sure. A lot of times, the field goal feels like a disappointment. The touchdown, well, that tells you you're getting it done. And Burrow's going to look to throw for it. And this one incomplete. So they went for the two, they don't get it. They made the decision to go for two. They didn't get it. They remained down by two points. Should they have kicked it there? A third quarter, I'm okay with it. Maybe first or second, you don't? I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm again, I keep coming back to, I don't like to chase a lot of points. Yeah. But I also don't know what kicking an extra point being down one does for me. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And bulldozing his way through. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The possession switching back to the New York Giants. Certainly want to avoid what they had to do last possession. That was punt the football because this, this game's starting to tighten up. In a basketball sense, you think about taking a little bit of the air out of the ball, right? Maybe milk some clock, limit the possessions. In this case, they might want to do the same thing but control the game offensively, put together some first downs, put together a drive, and keep it away from them. Jones and the Giants now with a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. They'll give it to Singletary here to start the drive. And this will be a Giants first down as the tackle made just shy of the 40. And Singletary has found a new home with the Giants after successful stints in Buffalo and Houston. He's coming off of three consecutive seasons where he produced over 1,000 yards from scrimmage, and New York is hoping that trend continues. Throwing Jones. Johnson's got it complete. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. 11 yards there, just like last play. But whenever you call and run the hitch route, a lot of times that ball's got to be in the air before the receiver even turns around. That's the result of throwing it so many times in practice. It's really a timing route. Make sure that ball's out of your hands. And oftentimes the receiver turns around, and there's the ball. Nice completion there. That's caught left side by Neighbors. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. We have played three quarters. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here at MetLife Stadium. It's been a good one so far, just a two-point game here as we get set for quarter number four. Singletary, they'll go up the middle. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. Good gain there on first down. It keeps them in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking. Nice hole for him. Ends up picking up nice yardage. Stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. Throw caught by Hyatt on the slam. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. A good pick up there, a 22. It's all pretty simple sometimes, isn't it? Go where the defenders are not, and he does exactly that. Makes a nice catch to move the chains. Defense, got to find a better way of accounting for the shorter routes that are being run against them.
So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. Singletary is not going to get back to the line of scrimmage as they'll tackle him at the three. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. Sometimes I think these defensive tackles get a little bit of a bum rap. We just see them as big guys that eat up blockers for others to make tackles. Oftentimes they're quicker than they get credit for. And this time he uses quickness to make a play. On second and goal, Jones. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. Now, those linemen, of course, can't be more than a yard downfield when a pass is thrown, and they might have been able to call that on a couple of guys there. Back to throw. Jones over the middle, taken in by Neighbors. They'll get this halfway home from the eight to the four on a gain of four. And I think he just wanted to get the ball to one of his playmakers to see if they can make something happen, but he ends up throwing into a crowded area, and after the catch, he isn't able to do much with it. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. Looking to throw. Jones, and that is too far out in front. He couldn't haul it in, incomplete. What an excellent defensive stand there in the red zone. Nice tight coverage. They certainly recognized how important it was to bring up fourth down here. A little extra pressure with this one for Greg Joseph. This to at least make it a five-point cushion. Joseph's got it, and that will push the lead up to five. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, they're a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because <laughs> they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. Well, and a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down. Joseph now to kick this one away. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. The Bengals offense and their quarterback set to take the field once more. And this defense might be about ready to wave the white flag. Nothing they have tried to throw at him has been that successful. He just processes things so quickly and makes the right read seemingly every time. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Look at repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Now a short one to Gesicki. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it makes it third down and two yards to go. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-get situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. This is third and two. Maybe the biggest play in this football game. They'll try and run for this with Moss. And that one going nowhere from the start as he's met in the backfield and goes backwards. Not at all what they envisioned on third down. Three yards in the wrong direction. And the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first, second, and third. He's had nowhere to run. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why do they keep feeding him the football? Well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time he might actually pop one of these runs. The bottom line is, he takes care of the ball well for them, so they'll keep handing it to him. And he'll get credit for putting him inside the 20 as the fair catch is made right at about the 19-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And it'll be giant football first and 10.
Jones and the Giants now with a first and 10 at the 20. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Johnson. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards, and moves the sticks. Well, it may seem a little unorthodox to some people. Got the lead, fourth quarter, yet he's still firing away. I think he believes that's the best way to go ahead and win the game. Yeah, a lot of coaches say, let's just run the football, be conservative. He's sticking to his game plan. Now, that is his game, and that's what they're going to ride. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. So it's Giants football here as we welcome you back. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. So they come up on second down. If they can get another run like we just saw, it would likely put an end to this thing. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. Here is third down and four. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. And the ball is out. Jones got hit and lost it. But this will get out of bounds, so possession will stay the same. You can almost see inside his face mask there the look of relief. He coughed it up, but it goes out of bounds. They keep it. Someone carrying around the lucky horseshoe, aren't they? If I were him, I'd go out and play the lottery after that one. A very fortunate man. And they're operating in plus territory here. They're thinking points. Definitely don't want to lose the football at this juncture. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts, and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Singletary again. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Another running situation on the doorstep as they come up second and ten. A give up the middle to Singletary. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. And now the question everyone's wondering, look at the clock, late fourth quarter, do they put the ball in the air here on third? I don't. I run the football and I tell my offensive line, no leakage up front. I don't want my running back hit as I hand the ball off to him. I don't want any type of an issue. But if I am going to throw it, quick throw out to the perimeter maybe one of my best receivers running a quick slant or something like that that one taken in by neighbors and he will not get what he needed as he stopped short of the first down at around the 22 so much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute isn't it guard the first down sticks don't let them get there and they've rallied and made the tackle so on fourth down out trots the kicker in a big spot here this to put him a touchdown and a two-point conversion up. And his kick here is good. And that'll push the lead up to eight. Now from a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position, but it's not out of reach yet, okay? Being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. Joseph now to kick this one away. Charlie Jones now from his end zone. 
And he won't quite make it to the 25. A final shot now for Burrow. He's going to let it fly. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. Well, it took us until the final play, Charles, to officially decide a winner. Although on that last play, they were so backed up, it would have taken a miracle, and they couldn't get that miracle done. Well, I like how you stayed with it because we both knew that this had to go down to the last play and neither side was going to exhale until that play concluded because we've seen the improbable before. A couple of laterals, maybe some poor defense on the back end. They might have gone all the way to the end zone. In this case, though, it didn't happen. Perhaps next time. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. From MetLife Stadium, good night, everybody.